Thank you very much for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the press conference by Minister Kono Taro. First, Minister Kono has an opening statement to make. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Kono Taro. I am still in charge of uh, administrative reform and the regulatory reform matter. Prime Minister Suga designated me as uh, minister, minister in charge of uh, vaccine rollout, uh, so I've been working on that too. I would like to give you a current uh, update on our vaccine situation. Well, we approved, the government approved the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine on February 14th, the Sunday. And uh, the next day, the uh, Commission of uh, Health Ministry uh, agreed that we will uh, inoculate uh, from February 17th to this year till February 28th next year. And uh, we will vaccinate uh, with uh, Pfizer vaccine for those who are 16 years old and over. And uh, we will start the vaccine for uh, vaccine tomorrow. Uh, we have asked 40,000 doctors, nurses, uh, to be vaccinated at uh, 100 hospitals all over Japan. And uh, out of those 40,000, uh, we have asked the 20,000 doctors and nurses to uh, keep the diary of their health condition, uh, the temperature, headaches, and all those, you know, whatever happened to them. And we will monitor uh, them for first 21 days and they will get the second shot starting from March 10th. And then we will monitor their health condition for the next 28 days. So total seven weeks we will follow uh, the situation of those uh, 20,000 doctors and nurses. We have received 64,350 vials uh, from EU last week and uh, we are delivering uh, vaccines enough to vaccinate those 40,000 uh, people starting from today. We, we actually uh, delivered the first batch at 6 o'clock this evening. We are going to vaccinate those 40,000 doctors and nurses uh, twice, and then we will start uh, approximately 3.7 million uh, doctors, pharmacists, uh, nurses, uh, and uh, some ambulance uh, drivers and so forth, uh, following those 40,000 uh, people. We are we are currently asking uh, the prefectural governors to give us the numbers of their, uh, those who are, <clears throat> who are taking vaccine in the second batch. And uh, our estimate is just about the 3.7 million people. Uh, then after those 3.7 million doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and others, uh, we will start the vaccinate uh, vaccination for the senior citizens starting in April. Uh, we hope to complete the two shots for senior citizens in two months and uh, three weeks. We are asking uh, each municipality to come up with the plans for inoculation uh, and the target is two months and three weeks, we will complete the vaccination for the senior citizens. Um, well, the, there's a big one is the size of Yokohama, city of Yokohama, uh, and the smaller one is a village of Aogashima, which has about 200 people. So we are not sure how long it will actually take. 
to inoculate uh, those senior citizens, but uh, two months and three weeks is hopefully our target. Um, we are delivering uh, deep, uh, deep freezers for the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, right now, uh, I believe we are going to deliver 1,500 deep freezers uh, to hospitals all over Japan by end of this month. Um, <clears throat> we had a big earthquake, earthquake in Tohoku um, the weekend, and, uh, but the uh, vaccine uh, is safe. Um, uh, those 100 hospitals that uh, we are uh, going to deliver the first vaccine all got the backup. Uh, electricity, so they should be safe with that. Um, anything could happen, uh, earthquakes, typhoon, heavy rains, uh, we need to be resilient uh, against anything that might happen. Um, needles and the syringe. Uh, what we usually use domestically in Japan, we tested uh, use those needles and syringe, and we are taking five doses out of one vial from the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, but uh, this uh, vaccine is very precious, so we are trying to procure uh, special needles or syringe that would enable us to get the six doses out of a vial. Uh, right now, we have enough needle and the syringe for the first 40,000 uh, doctors and nurses, but I am determined to get enough needles and syringe for all the uh, vaccination. We are currently developing a uh, new uh, vaccine management uh, system using uh, club. Uh, right now, most of the municipalities use the uh, vaccine uh, record with the paper. Uh, the, it will usually take two months to put those record into the system. Uh, the, we would like to set up a new national database so we can encourage people after three weeks after the first shot to uh, take the second one. And if people move uh, across the municipalities, the cities that they move into could encourage them to go for the second shot. So we are hopefully uh, complete this new database before April 1st so we can start using the new system for uh, vaccination for the senior citizens. Uh, the second batch of the vaccine coming from EU has been approved, and uh, we are expecting the second batch coming to Japan next week. And uh, we hope to uh, increase the number of vaccine for Pfizer uh, into March, April, then later on. Um, our schedule uh, depend on the number of vaccine uh, we can get from Europe. I have been speaking with the EU and the foreign ministry here has been working with the EU embassy here and the EU headquarters in Europe. We hope to uh, get enough vaccine for that. As for the foreign residents in Japan, if you are registered with the municipality, you are eligible to eligible for the vaccine, just like any other Japanese. If you are 65 years old or older, uh, you will get the preferred uh, uh, vaccine starting from sometime in April. Uh, then, if you have a diabetes or some basic sickness, uh, you will go to the second in line. Uh, you can expect to receive coupon from the municipality sometime in March, and you can uh, start making reservation with the cities.
for vaccination, and uh, you can uh, you can get a vaccine uh, in the city where you are registered. And uh, diplomats who are not registered, uh, we are going to ask each embassy to uh, make the list of the diplomats and their army. And they can also ask uh, where they, the municipality where they live to issue coupon, and with a coupon, uh, they are entitled to get the vaccine, uh, just like any other Japanese. So if you have any questions, uh, the Health, Welfare, Labor Ministry has a uh, multilingual uh, helpline. Uh, you can call them and ask questions. So that's, that's basically it. If you have any questions concerning the vaccine rollout, I'll be happy to answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so now, Minister, will entertain questions from the reporters. Uh, please raise your hands if you have questions or have any appointed. Please state your name and affiliation before asking a question. And the same goes to uh, those who are joining us via Zoom. So, uh, any question for Robin? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Robin Harding from the Financial Times. You said that your schedule depends on the number of vaccines you can get from Europe. What has Pfizer promised you about the delivery schedule? When do they contractually have to deliver um, the vaccine by? And are you confident that the EU, which desperately needs this vaccine itself, is not going to block exports to Japan? Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, um, I've been speaking with the ambassador, EU ambassador in Tokyo, and the uh, foreign ministry has been getting in touch with uh, EU headquarters. Uh, foreign minister Motegi has been speaking with uh, EU counterpart. And uh, we are fairly confident that EU will give us uh, okay for uh, the Pfizer vaccine. But as the number increase, uh, later on, we hope that EU will give okay for all of them. Uh, we would like to speed up the process. Right now, the Pfizer in Europe is trying to increase their production capacity. So their existing manufacturing lines kind of slow down uh, because they are adding the new capacity. Um, into the spring, they told me that number would uh, go up. Uh, quite a bit, and uh, we are hoping to get it delivered to Japan. Is that a follow-up question for them? Okay. Can you be more precise on how much they have promised by when? I'm not at the liberty to say that at this moment. Thank you. All right, uh, Selena. Mr. Komenhara, thank you for taking more questions. So when it comes to herd immunity, mm -hmm. you, when it comes to herd immunity, when do you think, when do you project you can reach herd immunity, which researchers say is 75% inoculation? Some studies have shown Japan may not reach that point until October, which is several months after the Summer Olympics. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really taking Olympics into my consideration. Um, I need to roll out the vaccine as I get the supply. With their own uh, inoculation planning. So my job is to deliver the vaccine, vaccine as they uh, move on. So the Olympic Games is not in my schedule. You need to talk to the Hashimoto-san, the minister in charge of Olympics, about uh, that. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but Olympics aside, when would you project that can reach that 75% inoculation mark based on the Well, we, we still have to uh, think about what would be our 
target to when. I need to get the concrete number of supply, and then we will come up with our possible target. We're not quite sure what will be the end game of this Pfizer vaccine or other two other vaccine combined. Um, we need to come up with some kind of target number. Uh, it will probably up to uh, Minister Tamura, uh, so he would tell me what my goal should be. I will speak with him. Thank you. Okay, let's have Noah from the Congress. Hi, Mr. Kono. Noah Snyder from The Economist. Uh, you mentioned uh, a new cloud-based system for uh, keeping track of, of uh, vaccinations. I was hoping you could tell us a bit more about uh, your plans for uh, how Japan will keep track of who's been vaccinated and, and when. Are you, are you considering introducing vaccine passports, uh, for example? Um, thank you. Well, with new national database, uh, each municipality should know who, who's been vaccinated, and uh, the government would know from the dashboard how many people uh, inoculated uh, each day. And uh, as for the vaccine passport, we have several countries, uh, several governments, been in touch with me about this idea of a, sort of a digital vaccine passport. Um, well, <laughs> I'm a bit too busy to uh, do that at this moment, but uh, it will probably be important. So um, as we start uh, vaccination, I uh, will probably ask Mr. Minister Hirai to get in touch with those people. I don't think we need a vaccine passport domestically, but if Japanese need to travel abroad, and if other country asking for some kind of uh, confirmation for the vaccination, we may have to be able to issue those. So with the national database, uh, the government know who has been uh, vaccinated once or twice or which vaccine and uh, should be able to issue those certificates. But I don't think we need those certificates for inside China. And will the data on individuals' vaccinations be linked through the My Number card or through driver's licenses? How, how will you keep track of, of, uh, uh, of which individuals are being uh, vaccinated or have been vaccinated? Well, each and every Japanese has a my number. So uh, in the database, your name, address, sex, birthday, and the my number is sort of uh, linked together. And as you move from one city to the other, uh, the new city could keep track of you with my number. But uh, um, the my number card or driver's license is not a associated with the system. You don't need a my number card or a driver's license or anything. I mean, when you go to the place for inoculation, you need to present some kind of ID to show you you are who you are. Uh, it could be driver's license or health insurance or, you know, whatever, or it could be my number card. But that is to identify who you are at the place and nothing to do with this uh, national database. Okay, uh, next question, uh, Lisa, if you could pass the microphone. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, it's Lisa Du with Bloomberg News. Um, it's been noted that Japan is starting vaccinations later compared to many other developed countries, and some officials here have said that you know they're using this time to learn from the mistakes and successes of vaccination efforts in the U.S. and Europe. What lessons and takeaways do you have from watching the experience of other countries? Um, have you spoken to your counterparts in those countries about what to do and what not to do? Thank you. Um, Pfizer started uh, clinical trials sometime in 
October, three months after the United States. And uh, they had to vaccinate a certain number of people. And then three weeks after the first shot, they done the second week. Then they had to wait for two weeks for antibody to develop and then bring those data to uh, US for uh, analysis. So the United States started the vaccination December, sometimes around 10th, 11th, so it would be two months. So I think we're doing OK. And uh, meantime, we learn uh, you cannot start running at the full speed from the beginning. There was a lot of confusion in the United States, and uh, France took time to you know, speed up the process. So I guess uh, my take is we need to start out very slow, checking the system, checking if the municipality operation is OK, and the reservation system is working, and then s speed up. So we need to give the beginning date to the municipalities sometime in April. And then we will, at the beginning, take it slow and then try to speed up. Um, as the rollout happens, as it starts, um, in the beginning, do you think supply will be the challenge, meaning that there won't be enough supply for those that want vaccines, or do you think it will be demand, meaning that there won't be enough people here that want to take the vaccine? Well, I guess quite a few senior citizens would like to take the vaccine. So I think the supply is a challenge. Uh, we need to get enough supply to the municipalities and uh, we need to have a certain amount of stock uh, in Japan. So if they, you know, if their speed is faster than expectation, we need to uh, provide uh, enough vaccine. And then the another challenge is, you know, there are going to be uh, definitely typhoon coming, and the earthquake is coming, uh, strong rain. So if something happens like natural disasters, uh, how are we going to keep the vaccine refrigerated at uh, minus 75 degrees Celsius? And uh, if the deep freezers out of electricity, we need to move the vaccine quickly or you know, just uh, vaccinate uh, more people at the place. So anything could happen and uh, we need to be creative. We need to be resilient. It's going to be a big challenge for next summer. Let's have one last quick one. Do you have an estimate on how much the population can be vaccinated when the Olympics start in July? Um, I don't have no idea. Um, the, as I said, the Olympics is not in my schedule. Uh, I mean, I'm not quite sure. Thank you very much. So well, let's take two more questions from the auditorium and then we'll go to the Zoom uh, participants. So how do Thank you. Thank you for holding this press conference for the media and in English. We appreciate that. Uh, well, that's very for our news and our news Japan. Uh, I received this question from a lot of media. They ask me, Japan is a global technological uh, giant and you have a lot of discoveries and new products in every uh, uh, field, including medical. Uh, so why is that Japan didn't really uh, develop the vaccine? I was asked this question. And also, China started the vaccinating its people a long time ago. And did you consider uh, taking vaccines or buying vaccines from China, or that is uh, not politically uh, correct? Thank you. Thank you. We have some. Um, we have some history concerning vaccine from the 1970s. Uh, there have been a few lawsuits against the government, and uh, we are not uh, 
asking people, I mean, it's not a duty to get the vaccine in this country. I mean, we encourage them to take the vaccine. And then HPV vaccine recently had some uh, side effect, and that was blown up out of proportion. And uh, people are now taking HPV vaccine and things like that. So the government is uh, very cautious, and uh, Japanese pharmaceutical companies probably not forthcoming uh, about the vaccine things. But some uh, Anjes and the University of Osaka is uh, in the process of a clinical trial. The University of Tokyo is uh, developing uh, vaccine and some other, I, I think, four, five, six vaccines are in process. So hopefully uh, we will see uh, them coming. And uh, I think we have got uh, enough number of vaccine from Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca. So we are not planning to purchase any other. I mean, the vaccine is precious and many countries are in need. And we have enough for, you know, we signed a contract for enough number of vaccines. So my job is to uh, speed up the process and uh, not buy more. Okay. Alexander. Alexander, uh, uh, Good evening, Minister Kwanis. Thank you very much for your press conference. Uh, Alexander Lin from Russian newspaper. I would like uh, to ask you about a Russian vaccine. Um, are there any chance for Russian vaccines in Japan? And have you got any offers from Russian government or maybe from Russian embassy to cooperate uh, in this area? And do you have enough information about Russian vaccine after all? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as, I, as I said, uh, we got uh, enough number, enough doses of vaccine from three companies. And uh, our policy is not to overbuy uh, precious vaccines. So we would uh, try to inoculate uh, Japanese people with three vaccines we have, we have got. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, a couple of questions from the Zoom participants. And the first questionnaire will be Simon. Can you hear me, Simon? Can you, can you unmute, Simon? <laughs> Simon. Yes, yes, I think we can hear you. Yes, it's not uh, apologies for that. Okay, yes. Um, you have the thing is that there's, there's quite a degree of skepticism and concern about vaccines in Japan. Uh, can the government do more to reassure people that the vaccines are safe? For example, you know, in the US, um, the president or, or the cabinet ministers we're taking vaccines in public. Does the Prime Minister have any plans to do that? Do you have any plans to take the vaccine to show people that it's safe? Yes. Or is there other things you can do in that regard? So that was Thank a, you. Yeah, so that was a, a Washington Post Tokyo Bureau Chief, Mr. Simon Um If there's demand, I'll be happy to go ahead and take the first shot. But uh, as, as I read the public opinion poll, uh, the quite a few senior people are willing to uh, take vaccines. So, um, Prime Minister Suga uh, told me he would uh, take vaccine as uh, as he is uh, 65 years or older. So he would uh, uh, he would be eligible soon, uh, and uh, he will probably uh, take as soon as his turn comes up. Uh, right now, uh, for senior citizens, I think uh, people are more willing to take the vaccine. So I, I would try to encourage the younger generation uh, that it is important for the even younger generation to take vaccine to prevent the disease. And uh, uh, so how, how I am going to communicate 
uh, which the younger generation is, I think, more important. Uh, through the television and newspaper, I can reach out to the senior people and uh, we, we are hoping a higher number of senior people will take the vaccine as uh, their turn comes up. So the next question will be uh, uh, Ms. Elaine uh, from Reuters. <coughs> Yes, uh, and thank you for um, this opportunity today. Um, Minister, this vaccine rollout is being seen as an important part of your um, political career, perhaps en route to becoming prime minister. Um, some people say you're outspoken and might have trouble working with the LDP factions if this happens. What would you say to this? Um, well, my job is to keep the health of the Japanese people and uh, let's not politicize this job. It's too important to politicize this. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So, uh, we'll come to the auditorium. Uh, Blake? Hi, Mr. Kanoko, Essex CNN. So, I'm just curious, just generally speaking, why has Japan been so slow to start vaccinating its people compared to other countries? Japan could be the 92nd country to start vaccinating tomorrow. Um, as I said, we have some history of vaccine. Um, and the, the government has been very cautious. So we decided to do the clinical trial with the Japanese people to show uh, we have done everything to uh, prove the safety and the efficacy of the uh, vaccine. As I said, the Pfizer started the clinical trial of this process in October uh, last year. And uh, they have to do the two shots uh, in you know, separating three weeks, and then it takes two weeks to have antibody developed. So the United States started in uh, processing in July with other European countries, I guess. And uh, the COVID-19 situation in Japan compared to Europe and the United States, states are not so severe. So I understand the Pfizer didn't include Japan in the first clinical trial. It didn't uh, need to, probably. But we asked of either Moderna to uh, speed up the process, and they finally started in October. So we are two months uh, after the United States, but uh, we were three months behind the clinical trial. So I think it is more important for the Japanese government to show the Japanese people that we have done everything possible to prove the efficacy and the safety of the vaccine to encourage uh, the Japanese people to take the vaccine. So at the end of the day, uh, we might have started slower, but uh, uh, we thought it would be uh, more effective at the end of the day. Was the in-country trial just to show that, I mean, 160 people, uh, medical experts I've talked to have said that that's not enough people to get you know, a big enough sample size to really prove uh, vaccine efficiency or safety. Well, at least we can show the data for the Japanese. Uh, you know, the, we can use the data for the foreign country, but uh, I think the government of Japan decided that we need to. Uh, do the clinical trial with the Japanese to prove the safety and efficacy, and that would be better for the Japanese people. Just one last question, it's okay. Uh, regarding vaccine skepticism, and you talked about uh, reaching out to uh, the older uh, folks by newspaper, television, and whatnot. Do you have any specifics about how you reach out to the younger generations? Well, for the younger generation, I think I need to go through the internet, SNS, and uh, some kind of flyer at 7-Eleven uh, or, you know, those things. So I need to develop the strategy how to reach out to the younger generation and to convince them 
uh, it's important even for them to get the vaccinated. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Peter? I don't speak to Peter Landers from the Wall Street Journal. I don't speak for my colleagues, but uh, some of us are journalists are a little bit lazy, and I wonder if it's uh, if there are plans to have just a single website where we could go and see how many people have been vaccinated. You know, right now, how much, uh, how many doses of vaccine have come to Japan, and just the, the you know four or five key figures in a single website, or maybe a daily tweet from from you. Uh, you can let us know your plans for sharing information. Thank you. Uh, the new national database is supposed to have dashboard, and uh, we can supply those numbers. Uh, some uh, internet news agency have already uh, tried to contact me to get those number for their uh, website, and so we'd be happy to supply those number to you know whoever want. And. Uh, we hopefully keep you updated uh, day by day. Very much. Uh, so um, we have two more, uh, yeah, two more persons wishing to ask questions from the Zoom. So we will take two questions. Yes. So uh, Maria. governments will inform the central government about the number of their medical staff and you will decide the doses you will send to them depending on the data. Does this mean that tomorrow's vaccinations are going to take place only in Tokyo or could you please tell us other places where they are going to take place, please? Thank you. And that was uh, Maria from EFE. Thank you. Um, the vaccination will start tomorrow and uh, we are not allowed to tell you where that's happening until it's been done. So uh, tomorrow after the vaccination takes place, uh, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay, and the uh, last question from the Zoom will be uh, Eleanor san Please state your name and affiliation before you ask question. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, my question would be, uh, if the recommendations to get vaccinated would not be enough to encourage the majority of Japanese people to do so, is there a possibility that the vaccination in Japan would become mandatory? Could you please tell your opinion on the idea of mandatory vaccination on the whole? Thank you. So that was Eleanor uh, san from uh, Russia. Well, we have changed the law in the past, and uh, I don't think any vaccination in this country is mandatory. I mean, we encourage uh, people to take certain uh, vaccines, but uh, this COVID-19 vaccine is not a mandatory. We, uh, we encourage people to take, uh, you know, one of those three uh, vaccines. But uh, I, don't, I don't think we are making the vaccination mandatory. Thank you very much. So, uh, unless you have a burning question, ask me question. Okay, Robin. Very quick question. Do you think Japanese people should take the HPV vaccine? I do. I do think so. Followed by, yes, no. Some of the uh, uh, vaccine uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, are pr producing or talking about producing booster shots for new variants uh, of the virus. Uh, what will the regulatory approval process be for, for booster shots in Japan? Will you require uh, clinical trials on uh, uh, the Japanese population for the booster shots as well? Thank you. I will ask the uh, ministry and uh, get back to you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So let's let's make this last question because uh, he's not very tight schedule. Just technical question. Uh, are we going to have this uh, press conference more often in English in the future? Well, 
if you need, I'll be happy to do this. I think we all need that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interest. You do that. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes today's press conference by Minister Cormier. Uh, please be seated uh, uh, while Minister leaves the room. Thank you very much.